How's it going everybody? It's Polly Family. We are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be taking a look at my Game Week 11 lineup preview. We're going to see how we did in Game Week 10 as well as see what we can do to continue our run of green arrows going into Game Week 11. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new or haven't done so already. It greatly helps out the channel and turn those notification bells on so you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Also drop us a follow over on Twitter so you keep up to date with any NO FPL news from price changes to injury news and anything in between and lastly make sure you give us a follow over on twitch so you can join us live for our preview and deadline streams which we will be doing a stream tomorrow at the time of recording that's going to be on the 4th of november there's a pinned comment down below that give you the exact date and time that's going to be for our deadline stream because during the week i do them throughout the week i i are not able to do them basically one hour before the FPL uh, deadline because I have work obligations, but that's going to be at 7 p.m. EDT, so make sure to check us out over on Twitch for that one as well. So without further ado, let's talk about our partners for this FPL video with Fantasy Football Scout. So if you haven't heard about Fantasy Football Scout, they have a fantastic members area during the regular season. It's £25 for the membership, and that lasts the entire year. And during the off-season, they give a 20% discount. But if you have missed that discount, fear not. You can still get the membership for £25, and it's fantastic. You can see the membership area just behind me. You have a bunch of different stats that you can use, powered by OptiStats, and create your own custom tables. You have the Rate My Team tool. You have the Season and ticker player comparison tools a whole array of things that you can use to help elevate your fpl game so use the link down in the description below so that you can get access to these exclusive exclusive tools to help elevate your fpl game sign up now so this is how the team set up in game week 10. 73 points. We did really, really well. And now we're into the top 10K at just under 8,000 overall rank. Crazy, crazy rank. My highest rank ever. We made two transfers this week and didn't use any chips. The two transfers was Fernandez in goal with a Z. He is uh, Brentford's backup goalkeeper to Raya as the other goalkeeper, Kemp, I think his name's Gunnarsson or something like that. Uh, he's out on loan until at least January. So we, we, we brought him in because we were going to play Raya in this game anyway. And it was either him or Foster that was going to come in and we were going to play either of those two. And Ramsdale was on our bench for 10 points, which isn't ideal. So the game, we could have been even better. Uh, but we're not going to cry uh, over that. We've had bench points this season. We actually did get some this week as well. The back line, Chilwell and James holding down the fort in stylish fashion. Chilwell getting a clean sheet with two bonus points. James, I mean, did not expect a goal, let alone two goals. Uh, he did fantastic uh, in that one as well. I was like, it's no, no, uh, you know, what's going to happen here? And then all of a sudden, bang, bang, James gets two goals and I'm, in, in, you know, in dreamland. Whereas the our other defenders, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Diaz, just the one point, both conceding twice uh, in those games. Uh, as well as Cancelo. Uh, he conceded just once while he was on the pitch. He actually got taken off before they conceded the second to Palace. So part of our defense did really well. The other part, not so well. And the double city defense hasn't really worked out for us. So we're going to monitor that over the next few uh, game weeks or so. It might be... It might come to an end as early as after the international break. We will see. Salah with the assist on uh, the game week. That is a return in every game except for game week two, I want to say. So Salah is on fire. Rafinha with a goal and some bonus points for his uh, troubles in the game as well. By and far the best player on the pitch. They did make uh, you know, a lot of work of it uh, versus Norwich uh, did Leeds. But uh, they're getting some players back and he is definitely crucial to that as well. And Bamo, we started him. He did not play at all. And that meant Smith Rowe who got himself nine points. Another somewhat fortuitous goal. But we'll take him. We get nine points off the bench, which is great because he was our highest scoring player off the bench. So a good bit of fortune there. You got to be lucky sometimes in order to get a high rank in FPL. And we certainly got that this week. Jimenez with a goal. Again, very fortunate. I'm not going to claim that, that that being skill. Skill is, you know, picking the player. Luck is what happens actually in the game for the most part. But Jimenez getting himself a very fortunate goal off a back pass versus Everton, who looked to be very, very shaky. Uh, and they play Spurs this week, so maybe Son or Kane could do some serious damage with Antonio Conte coming in as the manager. Ivan Tony, just the two points, could have potentially had some like had some half chances here and there, but all things considered, Brentford got a 
battered for the majority of the game uh, versus Burnley. So hopefully they can pick it up versus Norwich as they should do. And then just St. Maximin and Brownhill with just the standard two points off the bench. So we got our bench order right. We didn't get our goalkeeper right, but that's fine. We got a nice green arrow. Uh, we used both our transfers, so we're just going to have one going into next week. But uh, the team's looking very, very good. So let's see how the defense is going to shape up as it stands for game week 11. Now we're going with a back four this week uh, as we have two defenders going up against Manchester United and typically United do very well versus Manchester City and will often hit them on the break with Marcus Rashford who seems to be playing a lot better uh, than what he was over the last season when he was mostly injured with the shoulder injury and the ankle injury and the back injury and every other injury that you could possibly think of. So we're going to be putting Diaz on the bench this week and going with just the four at the back with Cancelo. Trent Alexander-Arnold playing West Ham away. That could be a bit tricky for him, but getting two assists in the Champions League tonight will help his cause there. Reese James and Chilwell did not start, uh, and I don't believe they took part in the Champions League fixture versus Malmo in midweek, so they should be fresh and ready to go versus Burnley. Although, in the past, uh, when Tuchel first took charge, over Chelsea he said that he'd like Alonso versus Burnley because of his height so that may uh you know change things uh, a bit there I know it says game week 10 above me the graphics just uh, uh just a bit wrong one one thing I just forgot to change it, it this is the game week 11 uh team lineup and then we're going to go with Fernandez in goal, and that is strictly due to the fact that he plays Norwich at home. Ramsdale plays Watford at home. Both easy to get some clean sheets. I expect them to both get a similar score. Uh, so hopefully uh, Brentford uh, can keep a clean sheet because if they don't keep a clean sheet versus Norwich, then it's not looking too not looking too great. Uh, and then we're going to have to start cutting some of their assets. Maybe we have to drop Fernandez down to, you know, Foster and just keep playing Ramsdale because Ramsdale looked great versus Leicester. Uh, and then we have St. Maximin and Brownhill on the bench. We'll talk about them uh, when it comes to the midfielders and the reasoning as to why I want them in that order when we see the rest of the team. So let's check out our midfield for game week 11. And as mentioned, this is our team for game week 11. So please ignore the minor mistake on the graphic. We do have 5 million in the bank. So we could take any one of our midfielders currently with Son's price point and sell them and get Son directly. Whether that be Rafinha, Smithrow, and Bermo. It can be any one of them except Brownhill who we're just going to keep on there because he's just going to be bench fodder. Salah, obviously going to be our captain. He's going nowhere this week. I do really like the fixtures of Smithrow. And in Bomo, I'm kind of half tempted to play Ramsdale over Fernandez, even though Fernandez does play Norwich to kind of hedge my bets 50 50 rather than 75 25 in favor of Brentford versus Arsenal. Obviously, with Ramsdale and Smith Rowe playing for Arsenal and Bomo. Um, and Tony's in our front line as well, and Fernandez uh, all playing for Brentford. So if I go 50 50, then maybe it won't be too bad. Brentford did look weak at the back, but. I don't expect uh, Mbomo to not be involved in the team. And he does help with the press well. He does split the guard, as it were. He's a very distracting player uh, when he is in the front line with Tony. Tony's the one that sets it up. And he can also kind of pull players away and make movements in behind, which is why he gets often open uh, in very dangerous areas. He just needs to start scoring because hitting the woodwork doesn't count in FPL. And he's hit it, I believe, six times this season, which is just crazy. Smith Rowe's done well. He's got two goals in the last two game weeks, as well as an assist, doing quite well. And I expect him to get uh, some chances versus Watford, who don't look to be uh, as sure under Ranieri or uh, uh, Cisco, uh, who is the previous manager. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Watford looked to be there for the taking. Then Rafinha versus Leicester. Leicester conceding very, very cheaply to Arsenal. And I think Rafinha, with the form that he's in, could do some damage versus them. So I've opted for him over the likes of St. Maximan as a additional attacker. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at the forward line and the complete team that we have currently for Game Week 11. And as mentioned, it's the Game Week 11 lineup, not the Game Week 10 lineup. I just wanted to mention it one more time, just in case the people will be like, oh, it's, it's Game Week 11, not Game Week 10. Um, so, yeah, this is the full team. We got Jimenez up front versus Crystal Palace off a goal and an assist. Um, over the last two game weeks, the assist two weeks ago and the goal uh, last game week. Tony is in there. He's actually my vice captain this week just because of the fixture mainly uh, versus Norwich at home. But I do expect Salah to play versus West Ham as they are a very tough outfit. Salah's going to get rest 
over the next couple of Champions League games, you would have thought, because of the fact that they are already through. Liverpool have won 4-4. Four and four. They don't really need to play first string. They could probably play other players like Divock Origi and whatnot. And I think Firmino came off with a hamstring injury. Oxley chamberlain came off injured. So Liverpool is starting to rack up a couple of injuries. And it only will take one injury to Salah, uh, Sadio Mane, or Jota. And then they could be in a bit of a... A bit of a problem uh, for their front men, and that wouldn't be good for Liverpool, who have started off very well uh, this season. Also, not to mention, they got to get a, somewhat of a gap before they go into the African Cup of Nations after the new year, because they'll be losing Mo Salah, they'll be losing Sadio Mane, and they'll be losing Naby Keita to their national teams and they won't be available in the Premier League for like three game weeks or so but luckily for them they have some uh, good fixtures so uh, I'm still going to captain Mo Salah because I think Liverpool is definitely uh, the you know the best you know captaincy option for us the most consistent option I mean he's only blanked to game week two so how, how can we not uh, how can we not basically pick him at, at, at the current players that we have in the team now in the future maybe that might change uh, we do have five million in the bank we do have the one free transfer in terms of the bench order and the lineup and that sort of stuff, because we'll get onto the transfers in just a second, I think that St. Maximin probably is best for a sub, just because I think he's more likely to get something versus Brighton than Diaz keeping a clean sheet. City did concede a goal tonight versus Bruges as well, and their defense hasn't been good. They got a, uh, only one win in the last three games that they've played, one of which was in the Carabao Cup, one of which was in the league, uh, which were both losses in the Champions League. They did get themselves the win versus Bruges, but I think that Versus United, they always seem to concede one on the counter. So I don't expect a clean sheet from Cancelo. Uh, and I hope that United win. I hope United absolutely smash City. But if Cancelo happens to get a cheeky little assist or something like that, I'll, we'll take those, basically. And United win the game 5-1 or something like that. That would be quite nice. But yeah, this is the team on paper, 4-4-2. I think this is the first time I played 4-4-2 this season. I'm not too sure, but I don't remember playing it at all. I know I considered it as initial starting formation, but I think this is the first time that, I'm, that I've am that i played 4-4-2. I'll have to go back and check, but let's take a look at some of the transfers that we could be making over the next few game weeks. So this is the transfer screen that we have here for our team. As you can see, 5 million in the bank, just the one free transfer, and that 5 million in the bank mainly came from just Lukaku being sold for for Tony, really, uh, we had a little bit of, uh, of of money off of Fernandez to or uh, Raya to Fernandez. I think it was like point one or whatever it was. But dropping Lukaku down to Tony was a nice chunk. So we do have some money to play with here. And like I said, one of the transfers is potentially in the future going to be looking at Conte going to Spurs, and that would be Son versus Kane. Which one do you want to get? Now, we can get both of them in four moves, and how can we do that? Well, we could do that by getting one, rid of one of our 6 million plus defenders. The one that I'm currently looking at potentially getting rid of is Diaz, even with their good run of fixtures. It just seems like City's kind of cooled off on the clean sheets a little bit. You know, Leeds isn't necessarily a foregone conclusion for clean sheets. Neither is Leicester. Brentford could potentially score one. Uh, Wolves seem to be a bit of a tricky outfit. So in theory, it looks like a good bit of clean sheets, but not necessarily in the immediate term. United, Everton, I mean, Everton probably doesn't look great at the moment, but West Ham could be a bit tricky for them as well as they got knocked out of the Carabao Cup or the Man City Cup, whatever you want to call it, because they've won it like the last four years or whatever it is. Uh, and they, they proved to be uh, quite difficult. So the easiest way for us to get Son in would be to take out one of our midfielders, uh, either Rafinha and Boma and Smithrow, and bring in uh, bring in Son for them. So if we're looking at our two midfielders here, uh, it would be Smithrow probably that would be the one that makes way. But he is so cheap and so flexible and he's probably going to play uh, more games uh, on the whole uh, than potentially in Bomo because in Bomo also gets subbed a lot as well. If we look at Smith Rowe, you know he I think he was injured coming into the the Norwich game, but apart from that, he very rarely gets subbed because of how well he's been playing and how crucial he's been playing uh, in that kind of number ten or wide left role. Whereas in Bomo is prone to being substituted early. Um, he's been, obviously been injured recently so that could be a bit of an issue but let's say we just get rid of him when let's say for argument's sake he was injured this week we could easily just go to the likes of son bring him straight into the team and then bam we have son in place and then we can still you know kind of pick and choose what we want to do but that would consume like i like i said all of the basically five million that we had in the bank 
So if we wanted to get the double up with Kane, we would have to do either one of two things. One, we'd have to get rid of Trent, which I don't think is smart to do. Or two, we'd have to kind of downgrade uh, one of our strikers and our defenders to very, very cheap players. So basically, I said we can get in in four transfers. So St. Maximin would go because we wouldn't want him anymore. Jimenez would probably go. And this is also for Ronaldo as well, uh, when you uh, when you kind of uh, deep it as well. Uh, we would bring in uh, Kane up front. We would then have uh, uh, Davis, Keenan Davis uh, from Aston Villa, just a cheap player. And then we would get rid of Diaz, and then we could have a very, very cheap uh, defender on the bench like Mankio, as an example. Uh, the only thing that this kind of creates somewhat of an issue... Uh, further down the line if we wanted to do a bench boost and then wild card away from it it makes it a bit more difficult uh later on or we can wild card into a team where we can then bench boost uh after the fact so that is something that is also a possibility uh which is a bit of an annoying chip but we were okay i think with the bench boost uh last season with a couple of hits uh here and there because Usually it's done around double game weeks, but that's a little bit further into the future. But that's one way we could potentially do it. The other way uh, would be to get rid of Trent Alexander-Arnold, who I don't think is very uh, you know good to to get rid of, uh, and then we could bring in Reggie on. Now this makes our you know our team a lot more solid uh, in terms of who we have available on the bench. So we still have five playing defenders basically for every every game week. We have four playing midfielders that we would want to play. We have Brown who, who plays and gets two points every week. Keenan Davis will be a bit of a dud and it'd be a bit unfortunate um, to not have him slightly higher. If the likes of uh, Broha was still playing uh, week in, week out, it would be exact money for him, uh, which would be quite nice. And that's if uh, the value were to stay. But don't really want to get rid of Trent because I think he's been so, so good. Uh, with the you know with the clean sheets and and just he's so threatening. I mean he showed what he can do in the Champions League tonight. Just two assists, no problem. He's also on some uh, direct free kicks on set pieces as well, uh, which we haven't seen much from the likes of Van Dijk or Konate or or Matip uh, this season. Getting direct headers from a Trent or Robertson even uh, set piece. So that is something we can do. That team it is very very solid. The only one that you really wouldn't want to play uh, would be Brownhill or one of the goalkeepers, depending on the fixture, obviously. But that would be exact money. I don't expect that to happen because I expect Son to probably go up in price. Maybe Kane to go up in price. Brozier will probably go up in price if he comes back in the team. If Trent goes up in price, then sure. Another thing that we could do if we really 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 wanted to. Uh, if we really wanted to keep Trent, uh, would be to, uh, instead of getting rid of Mbomo and just having him as a rotation between uh, Smithrow uh, and himself, would be to get that extra million out of Rafinha because his next set of fixtures uh, during the Christmas period aren't great, really. So Leicester at home, you know, Leicester should be better uh, than what they were. Spurs could be really, really tight defensively. Brighton are always a good outfit. Uh, at the moment, Crystal Palace have been playing well. Brentford, he could do decently well against, but then he's got Chelsea, City, Arsenal, and Liverpool. Those could be, uh, you know, three losses in a row with no goal scored for Leeds' entire team, basically. So he might be the one to go. So if we want to see how that one uh, would work out, so we'd get rid of uh, Rafinha. We would bring in Son. We'd have that extra 1.4 million. We could get rid of Jimenez. We can get rid of Diaz. If we went down to the likes of a Livramento. Uh, and then we could bring in Harry Kane. And then we could still have a decent enough forward. Like I said, uh, a Brocha as an example could be someone that we did bring in if we really, really wanted to. And that would be something that would be a little bit better, be a little bit more comfortable playing a Broja uh, instead of, uh, you know, a Tony on week to week. Or if, like, let's say, let's take an example of a bad fixture for Brentford. So a bad fixture for Brentford uh, might be, you know, this is long term. But let's say hypothetically game week 22 uh, when they play Liverpool. Well, Arsenal that week in game week 22 have Spurs away, which, you know, anything can happen. Uh, they, they did... Uh, from what I remember, they they I believe they beat Spurs this season. Did they beat Spurs this season? Yeah, they won through. They won through one home. They, yeah, they, they absolutely thrashed them. So they could play in in that fixture. 
Uh, and then we have uh, Southampton who have Wolves away. So there is a little bit of a rotation there. It does require us to like, you know, kind of lower the team a little bit. A lot of the money is in our defense. Eventually, will we want double Chelsea defense? Maybe, maybe not. You know, getting rid of Chilwell as an example uh, for like, let's say, Lamptey, hypothetically, just another cheaper defender that we know that plays, could free up a lot more cash, which could mean Brogia, uh could just be there. And then we can upgrade Tony to maybe one of the more mid-priced forwards uh, that we haven't even talked about for the large portion of the season because they've been injured for so long in the likes of Calvert-Lewin or in Patrick Bamford. And then we can have, you know, these guys up front playing Basically, we can we can week out for the most part, or we can pick and choose. Hey, we'll play three in defense, and then pick the better of Lamptey or Livermento or whoever, and then we can have you know Son and Salah playing every week, and Kane uh, playing as well with Calvert Lewin, and then you kind of pick, you know, basically who's the best, your fifth defender and one of your midfielders, or your forward basically, and you can kind of pick and choose that as well. We also want to be looking forward to when we can bring in United assets. Now, if we're getting rid of both of our Spurs players after their run versus Norwich, even though I do think they do have a decent bit of, of fixtures in there as well, if we want to kind of go half and half and we think Son's the guy that's doing all the damage, then we could just take out Kane uh, and go straight to Ronaldo, uh, who's currently at 12.4 million. If he's the main guy and he's been the one doing all the goal scoring, basically, in the Champions League, I mean, this United run is ridiculous. But if having Kane and Son, if we wanted, uh, let's say, Ronaldo and Rashford or Ronaldo and Sancho, we could always have the funds into transfers because of the pricing with Ronaldo and Rashford versus Kane and Son. So that's some kind of future, uh, future proofing there or looking a a into the future of what we could potentially do. I'm, I'm kind of you know, wary of Mbemo's fitness. If he is not fit for this game, I think I might just go with the Son move and then kind of risk it a little bit going into the international break with just the one free transfer and then see how uh, Kane and Son uh, do versus Leeds uh, and Everton because they will be playing tomorrow, which I'm intrigued to see what lineup Conte puts out. I uh, can't remember the team's name, but they're playing some team in the Europa Conference League and we'll see kind of how they do. We'll then see how they do versus Everton. Then who have the international break where Kane and Son probably won't be, uh, you know, available there for and then we'll see uh what they do when they come back if they do well then everyone's going to jump on them for those three really good fixtures because they have a bunch of four it's like leeds burnley and then a couple other games that are like ridiculously good uh in that bunch so uh yeah that's going to be it for the game week 11 preview let me know if you think i need to make any transfers this week whether in bueno is fit or not we could always just easily just play diaz if we really wanted to or saint maximin who doesn't have a terrible fixture versus brighton away so let me know what you think down in the comments below do you like the spurs assets as well do you like uh I was going to say N'Golo Conte, Antonio Conte, although he did manage N'Golo Conte, which is funny. Uh, and the commentators often got the names mixed up. But Antonio Conte going to Spurs. And are you going to be looking at some of the Spurs assets going into game week 11 onwards? And that is going to do it for the lineup preview for game week 11. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new or haven't done so already. It greatly helps out the channel. And turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter so that you can keep up to date with any and all FPL news from price changes to injury news and anything in between. And lastly, make sure to give us a follow over on Twitch so you can join us live for our preview and deadline streams as we normally do. We'll leave a pinned comment down below and check out the link down in the description for our Fantasy Football Scout membership link. It's going to help elevate your FPL game. You get access to the Fantasy Football Scout membership area. You can also get that link over on Twitch. It's in the about section or it is also, I believe, still pinned or it's in my description on Twitter as well. Fantasy Football Scout memory is fantastic. It gives you access to a whole bunch of tools and it's going to help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching and until the next one, take care.